So I, all I heard was Jesus Christ, and then he cut out and said bird thing. So I just want you to know that's in December. Welcome to Direct to Video. VHS? VHS? A podcast where we pair movies like fine wine. Today, mm -hmm. we watch Don Bluth's Anastasia. I say Don Bluth because I, for a second, wanted to say Disney's Anastasia, and that's not right, even though I saw it on Disney+. Plus. It is, it is right now <laughs> in the awful, awful way that it is. Correct. In in the fact that that Disney has a monopoly on all media now, yeah, it's uh, it's great. Everything's going awesome. Uh, <laughs> did you did you see the 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 box? The, I don't know what to call it. The box art that they had for it. I don't know what it is on Disney Plus. I didn't take note of it on on uh, on Apple TV. I, I thought about buying it uh -huh. uh, digitally, and then I. Decided not to, because when I saw it on Apple TV, it had this like, it was like a, like a pale blue background and the worst render of Anastasia I have ever seen. I think this might um, just be the official one, though, because I'm looking at, oh, wow, wait, this one's also very bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the theatrical release poster and I'm like, this looks great. But the, the, yeah, the Apple TV one, which is just, it's just like a floating head. It's just her yeah. floating head. Yeah, I'm Terrible. looking at her floating hat. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the worst possible picture you could. This, yeah, this theatrical release trailer where, where or this re theatrical release poster where it's her standing in a glowing doorway and Rasputin is behind her like a big ghost. That's great. I like that one. And you have the reflection as well. She's wearing the ball gown. Oh yeah, no, that's great. It's they good. They should have gone with it's that. It's good. But this this one where she's making like a confused sneer <laughs> it she looks like she's like a microsecond from sneezing like Ugh. and like and the thing that bothers me is she's also on the poster again just in case you might forget who she is <laughs> and then there's her love interest twice oh yeah what the not, not amazing oh and here's here's one i think that was released in another country it looks french um, where they're standing like it's a, a rom-com, which I do enjoy, because I don't know if you know this, this is based, this movie's based on a rom-com from the 20s? It's based on the, what is it, the, it's like a Yul Brynner flick, isn't it? Maybe, that sounds right. Uh, but it's like also called Anastasia, that just doesn't have all the magical stuff, it doesn't have that she's really Anastasia, it's just that they're trying to run this con and these two, like, fall in love with each other. There's also a musical. A musical based on this. Based the, the on movie. light, but that, that doesn't have any of the magic stuff. And <laughs> So it doesn't have, it doesn't have Rasputin's pretty, pretty good villain song. The music in this is surprisingly competent. <laughs> with, of course, um, what is it, Remember December, that one, that, like, as the, like, linchpin song. Oh, I have so much to say about that song. The so okay, I'm looking this up right now. The this movie was based on the it's based on an older Fox film from the 1950s. Oh, I thought it was old. Yes, that. starring Yul Brynner and Ingrid Bergman. Wow, where he's the le he's like he used to be a. Uh, a member of the royal army and mm. the villain is basically like a, another guy who's jealous okay and that's and that's also the plot of the musical except the other guy who's jealous is like a he's like a soviet guard who's following them so in my opinion even though mm -hmm. Rasputin is just Rothbart from um Swamp, Swamp Princess. Princess. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. To the point where I did wonder if Richard Rich had, like, touched this. <laughs> I don't think he uh, did. Yeah, I, I don't think he did. I don't I don't know if it was just, like, if this was just a character that was floating around at Disney when both of them left <laughs> or what. But, like, well, Swan, he, Swan Princess predates this movie for by three years. 
Right, but I I can't imagine Don Bluth was just like, I'm going to steal this character, because Rothbard's not that good a character, so. No, no. But, but he's basically the same character in that he's just like a wizard that the king pissed off and that cursed him and tried to, you know, off his daughter, basically. Like, the, the same basic character, except that he, I feel like he is the thing in this movie that allows it, even though he is... Like, constantly fall apart and turn into a skeleton and stuff. He's the thing in this movie that allows it to be a movie for kids. It doesn't make it feel too much like a, um, a Hunchback of Notre Dame. Where it's, like, when mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when it's gonna get too much into, like, being an adult movie about an uprising that killed an entire family and changed Russia yeah. forever. And now they're low-key trying to undo that. Uh, when it's too much about that. He casts a spell that attacks a train, and it, like, works partially because this is such a well-animated movie that I'm, like, watching these action scenes, this, like, look at him go. This, I will say, this movie is beautiful. Don Bluth movies look different from Disney movies, right? He has a different, um, he has a different aesthetic mode. He he is much uh-huh. more, like, he, he is less squash and stretch and more like humanistic acting i found Um, at times i found these characters to be distractingly realistic yes like i i I was looking at anastasia and i'm like i can't get over the fact that you have like a normal nose and shoulders i need you to have slight a slightly weirder nose and shoulders (laughs) so i can stop looking at it 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 makes her look it makes her look kind of buff compared to like other like Disney Disney princess characters. Right. Like because she has normal human proportions. <laughs> she has normal um, human proportions. And it's like I, I'm not saying that you can't have normal human proportions, but I I think I'm so trained out of regular human proportions. And it's a little weird because there is the guy who looks like um who looks and talks like uh Fievel's dad. Who's just yeah, like, I'm yeah. gonna be a little bit more cartoony than everyone else in this No, in absolutely this, uh, and movie. And it's like, what are you doing here, man? It makes a lot of these characters feel kind of floaty mm. because they're moving so realistically, but like the things happening around them are not. <laughs> and it 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 kinda to me adds to this movie's stage play feel, because like um, in a Disney movie, right? Uh, you don't get in a Disney movie a character starts singing and then there is like a large choreographed number happening behind them. Like, mm-hmm. like in this, when Anastasia starts like, uh, when anybody in Anastasia starts singing, if it's a big enough number, the crowds around them are doing choreographed dance. It's really sure. fun. We get, like, Rumor in St. Petersburg, where, like, it's, yeah. it's basically a song sung by a chorus at the beginning of a of a show. Or, um, yeah. or the villain song. With the, the bugs. The thing that struck me about that is, again, the bugs were singing, like, the catchiest part of that song. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it left, uh, it left Rasputin with, like, y- you know, kind of, like, sing shouting. But the bugs were yeah. singing the, like, God, what? Well, what was it like darkest nightmare or like so- something about <laughs> like, that's uh, not it, but it's something about yeah. like darkness or, or nightmares or something like that. And it's just like, it's like catchy. I can't think of it right now because one of the other songs is playing in my head. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Uh, what was this? This was in the dark of the night in the dark, yeah, of the in night. the dark of the night. They're just like repeating it over and over. And it like bobs. It's good. It's, I have so much. I, I flip flop on this movie a lot. Mm-hmm. Watching it, post watching it, pre watching it, I I feel like I'm I'm like of two minds about this film. Um, but I agree with you. I think the movie. I think the music in this is solid. I'm curious. I know um, May has listened to the musical. I'm curious to listen to the actual musical because it's a lot longer, and uh, mm-hmm. I want to know how different it is and. She gave me a rundown of the story a long time ago, and I was like, "That's wild. That's like no- that's nothing like what this movie is. It's <laughs> it's so different." So let's let's get into it. Let's talk about Anastasia. We open on narration from Anastasia's grandmother, 
talking about how they used to live in a magical world of blah, 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 blah. It was frankly a little bit distracting because my first immediate thought was like, well, you shouldn't have been living in a magical world of glitz and glamour and dances because if you didn't, there wouldn't be an uprising. Uh- <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it. I, I will say, <laughs> the first... 10 the pre the prologue i keep wanting to call it the preamble the prologue (laughs) of this movie which is this kind of narration by the the dowager empress Mm. uh describing how great life used to be when it was all magic and dreams if you have like a historical bone in your body you got to get rid of it it's it's this movie is so far beyond historical accuracy after this point or during this point and the rest of the movie doesn't really help there Um, is i thought (laughs) I thought it would be a bigger problem for me. I th- again, I think Rasputin for some reason works. Cuz I remember watching the prologue and getting mad that they were going to blame the upright one of the many uprisings in, in Russia and overthrowing yeah. the Tsar and killing his whole family on Rasputin cuz I was like people did that. This is this was a people's uprising. There was a lot of stuff mm-hmm. that happened, but there was a reason for it, and it feels like it's ignoring the reason for it, and then yeah. it does it, and for some reason, as the movie went on, I was pretty much okay with it. I was like, I'm fine with Rasputin just running around, like, wanting to kill somebody, and the fact... I, I kind of wish he was running around more. <laughs> and, yeah, and I, and I, and, but I kind of didn't have, like, a huge issue with, like, because it does kind of make sense that all the people would be talking about, oh, maybe maybe Anastasia is still around. Because, like, there is this, like, mythical quality of royalty, even if all the royalty has been murdered by the people so they didn't have to deal with them anymore. They, they retain, like, a mythical quality of, like, I kind of want the royalty to be there. Especially, maybe even more, because they're all dead, you know? No, absolutely. I, I, I think there is something about like how like comparing this to the French Revolution, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you had like an incredibly public trial and execution of of Louis the Sixteenth. That sounds right. And Marie Antoinette, right? Mm-hmm. And like, I, I think there there was a certain amount of like. People who watched this happen who were like, oh, they're they're just normal people. Like, I think in France, it broke the spell a little bit. But like, Russia's a big place. And nobody, no, for, for uh, until this movie came out, really, nobody really knew what happened to, to the royal family. Yeah, I think it was about floating around this era when they tested some bones. Uh, yeah and we're like yep we got them uh which honestly it's a bit of a downer just just to just to be certain that yeah no they killed all the children too you know it sucks yeah it's 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 not it's not good you can you can tell why a story like this happened because it's a little bit better to think like oh maybe the kids survived you know, I hear they didn't get all the kids or something like that. Because at the because the 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 big part of this revolution is like this truly awful thing that was done to innocence. I mean, sure. Uh Tsar Nicholas or Nick Nicola? Anyway, he probably had to go. Uh I don't know that much about him, but he was he was if, a real piece of shit. I can tell you, <laughs> he, he sucks. He, n- but I can tell you what. <laughs> there's probably not a lot of real good czars, and I'm sure he was throwing a lot of parties while Russia was starving. So, like, sure. Mm-hmm. But like, it's 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 hard to hold kids. It it sucks to hold kids accountable for the sins of their parents. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like. The, there is no amount of like I don't know more moral math mm-hmm. um, when it comes to when it comes to that kind of stuff and yeah and it's like and ultimately it's like the 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 point of this movie is kind of almost to to not talk about it like yeah. it doesn't want to talk about the revolution the uprising in any sort of like concrete terms because it it it, it would be too much 
Oh, um, absolutely. And, it, and so, but then it's like, why, why this movie then? <sighs> yeah, and the only thing I can say is because Don Bluth, he tended to make darker, more grounded movies that had at least a little bit of connection to like reality. Yeah, you know, yeah, and and. The idea of saying, oh, well, there is this legendary princess, and the, and Fox happens to already have, like, a story that I could, like, make into my own story. Um, I can kind of see it, but it's like the choice is made. <laughs> it's so strange. Uh, but it's sort of like, I mean, I mean, did Pocahontas really address, like, <laughs> No, and I mean, Pocahontas <laughs> also has that that problem, right? But it's the part of the part of the kind of the tragedy of this movie is that, like, we are going to see in like twenty years another go at this exact story, right? A mm. princess who has kind of sort of lost her memory of her family and meets a kind of roguish con man. To, to get to take her to to uh to to find them and that movie is tangled and that movie's good um I'm sorry and that movie's for doing a, a lot mile of away with this <laughs> and that movie is so different from what this movie is right mm-hmm. but like the fact that tangled is good and it works means that like the bones of the movie anastasia like are good. There's a there is a story there that is worth telling, and it is crushed by the this prologue. Like <laughs> <laughs> the prologue um, is a lot. Uh, but I do like Rasputin. I like his design. I think Doc Brown oh, is given a hundred and ten percent. He's walking I like around with his this, body like, falling apart. Oh yes! It, oh, when he sold, sells his soul to demons, and it like sucks his body in, like like layer by layer. Yeah, that's great. And he's he sold his soul for this um, what do they call it? Like a reliquary. A uh, reliquary, yes. Uh, for this reliquary that I'm not exactly sure what's in it. I guess demons. Uh, maybe I think just the, the curse on the Romanov name. It's really unclear, but like what what what's in it are tiny green gargoyles. Yeah, tiny green <laughs> gargoyles that, that are gonna that, that do Joker shit. Everything. They do they <laughs> <laughs> these tiny green gargoyles. Just all they do is Joker shit. Like you release them, they're gonna do some. They're gonna free. They're gonna hear a person say. Oh God! Wouldn't it suck if these train cars were uh uh were uh couldn't be disconnected and then they freeze them together, right? Like, yeah, absolute no, great. king shit. <laughs> That's what's in that reliquary. They are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So he has a scene, the same scene that Rothbart had with Odette's mm-hmm. dad, where he is thrown out and he's like, "Oh, I'll get my revenge on you." Uh but again, Doc Brown is saying it. Who I I mean, um, yeah. what's his name? Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd. I feel like I don't see or hear Christopher Lloyd in a lot of voice acting roles, but every time I do, he's like selling it. And I kind of wish he's, he did more voice acting. He he's is like super he is, good at it. <laughs> he is in the there was a remake of King's Quest that came out. Yes, several and he's years like, ago now. The old king, right? He is, yeah, he is so good in that. Yeah. He is so good in that. I, speaking of which, that, that King's Quest remake, um, has, uh, uh, it has an ending that genuinely, like, moved me to tears. Highly recommended if you haven't played it or uh, seen it. Maybe I should check it out. I also think Christopher Lloyd, Christopher Lloyd in this role is like bringing a certain amount of a menace that I don't think you normally get from Christopher Lloyd. (laughs) It's surprising if you compare him to his other roles that you know him from. And like for me, like I said, Doc Brown is like at the top 
like Professor mm-hmm. Plum. Like what yeah, evil yeah, Professor role Plum. have you ever seen him in? Uh Judge Doom. Oh, that's true. God, I forget that that's him. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think this and Judge Doom are up there in like one, I think him as Judge Doom, his physical presence, he's huge. <laughs> he's a huge guy. What this makes me kind of realize is actually how hard Christopher Lloyd has to work to come off as affable. Like <laughs> He really uh, performs to the rafters here. And then I, the next night, that night, I don't know. I think it's like that. I think it might even be during this ball. It's really it might unclear. Be during this. Yeah, maybe they're just holding the ball every night. The peasant uprising happens. They charge into the palace. They don't say the words. They kill everyone. But they kill everyone. And Anastasia and her grandmother manage to get away. Mm-hmm. They're, they're helped out of a secret passage Yeah, by a little scamp. We'll never see that Dimitri. scamp again. No, he died. He died in that uprising. We see him die. <laughs> yeah, he gets um, bumped on the head. Everybody knows in movies. In movies, if you get donked on the head, you're, that's it. You're a goner. Yeah. And Anastasia also gets donked on the head, so she gets amnesia. She, yes, she's trying to she's trying to get on the train. and She doesn't make it. I, I want to actually be clear about this. I want to be clear about this because Anastasia will have basically have amnesia later but it's actually done really well because i don't think it is amnesia right it's just that she was eight and how well do you remember anything from when you were eight nothing i don't remember shit i don't remember what i had for breakfast yesterday like (laughs) and and she begins to remember her life once dimitri is like constantly trying to remind, quote unquote, remind her of it to try to train her to pretend to be Anastasia. So she doesn't really I, remember her life until she's getting constant reminders. And then she's like, and there's this great bit at the end where like the thing that convinces her grandmother that she's real is a smell. Um, yeah. Because smell is so connected to memory that she just immediately gets this like very personal moment from it. And I think it's done pretty well. Uh, when it no, could absolutely. be done poorly. I, this is the thing, this is, this is, I think, the thing about the movie that makes it, that makes it, that makes it run, um, mm-hmm. is, is this movie's obsession with memory. Um, because I, I think that there are a lot of people who, um, who, who go through the motions that, that Anastasia goes through of like trying to like there's something in your head you can't quite get at it and so you just start kind of like picking up stuff doing stuff like like oh the the if I just if I go through the motions just right I'll like I'll I'll figure out what it is that I'm trying to remember my siblings came to visit me um Mm -hmm. a few months ago and it is strange I think the way that the brain stores memory because if you ask me, mm-hmm. uh, what did you do the summer when you were seven years old? I'd be like, I don't know. I don't remember that. Because I don't. Or at the very least, it's not stored in there as the summer when I was seven years old. But when me yeah. and my many siblings got together and we talked about like our childhoods, a bunch of stuff I hadn't thought of in years was like popping up because it was associated with them. You know, yeah. and like these conversations. And so there's like, I, the idea that sometimes a memory is something that you can only get to with an object or with another person. It's yeah. just like, it's locked in there. And you don't have the key. Yes, the, the other person is the key. And that's like, that is genuinely fascinating. Well, and and that's I want to talk about again. I the, the there is a little bit of genius in this movie, right? Because the thing that Anastasia has in her memory is the song um, "Once Upon a December," right? Mm-hmm. But she can't. She doesn't understand its importance, right? Uh, Dimitri, unbeknownst to her this whole time, has in his possession the music box. Mm-hmm. Um. It, that her grandmother like that, gave her that plays that song that plays that song 
And she has on a necklace the key to the music box. <laughs> and so it's like it's all it like like symbolically it's all there and it all comes together right with, oh, like that smell. It smells like peppermint. And then she like <clears throat> comes over and she grabs the music box and she's like they're playing with it and she immediately like, oh, I know what this is, turns it, opens it, and starts singing. It's good. It's like it's the the ultimately it's the the thing that proves to to the grand duchess that she's anastasia is is just is her it is ignoring ignoring her just to to have this memory right Mm -hmm. like oh you don't you're not you're not you're not not, there's no there's no script this isn't right you trying to pull a factoid out of your head this is you desperately trying to grab something out of the ether and make it solid that's how memories work Mm -hmm. um and and then the rest of this movie is kind of bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I will I give this movie I think I'm giving this movie way more benefit than you're giving it. I'll say a couple things about it just broadly. One yeah. compared to if you compare it to Hunchback and Notre Dame or like Hercules and like a lot of the Disney movies mm-hmm. that are coming out now, I think it like stands above them, or at least apart from them. Oh a little yeah, bit. and like with a str- with a stronger script and with visuals that are at least as good. Um, I think I definitely think it stands above both of those movies. And then, um, well, let's not bring up like Tarzan because <laughs> Andy hates Tarzan. I uh, I think this movie's better than Tarzan. Yeah, I <laughs> sure you I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't like that uh, though. I, don't <laughs> I just I don't, I don't think that's as clean a comparison. Like I you can compare it easily, I feel like to Hunchback to see like they're both like movies that I feel like are aimed more toward adults. Um <sighs> even though they're made for kids and you can kind of see where where they There's, where one does better than the other. And the other thing is They're stuck in the it, muck. And here, here's here's the other thing about it that I feel like is important. I haven't seen all the Don Bluth movies. I might not have seen most no. of them. But this is no. the favorite, my favorite that I've seen. Because I think the original Land Before Time is a fucking slog. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> and I think Fievel, if, if you, if you fucking watch American Tale with the idea, I'm going to get a story out of this, you are wrong. <laughs> like, but I, I don't know. I, I think you're right. I think it, Compared to an American tale in the land before time, it's so much more cohesive. It knows what mm-hmm. it wants to be aesthetically and like, but, but at the same time, I still don't think it, I still don't think it comes together when all is said and done. And I think that's tragic because like, it's so close and I, I don't know what it is that's missing. I feel like this is a movie that a lot of people around my age and older talk about as their favorite Disney movie, ironically enough. <laughs> it's, even though it's, it's a movie fully that not yeah no i i remember having conversations in college uh with people who are like oh my favorite disney movie is anastasia and having to be like that's not a disney movie it's not disney, um, it's don bluth i mean to be yeah, fair but, don bluth could have <laughs> defined your childhood very easily he also made a bunch yeah, of movies but absolutely you can't walk around he was, being like yeah my favorite disney movie is anastasia or maybe thumbelina Stop this. Uh, no, we can't talk about this. We can't talk about Thumbelina until we watch it. I just think, here's here's the thing about Anastasia that I think makes it work for me, at least. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I did not hate any of the songs. And do, you, and do you know what it does when the plot's starting to slow down a bit? It does one of two things. It either throws a song at you, or has um, demons come and do something. I was going to say Rothbart. Yeah, it has a Rasputin. Rothbart, yeah. <laughs> it has, blow up a train. It has Rasputin do, doing, doing his thing. And just the fact that, like, the action scenes are animated so well and the songs are pretty good, I feel like that elevates it for me. It also helps. I think the thing that works for me is Anastasia as a character is great. She is all around just a good character. You want her to succeed. I feel like it's partially because she is based on this old rom-com where she 
she and Dimitri have such a rom-com relationship immediately in that they like meet each other and start hating each other at the same time. And it's like, it shouldn't work <laughs> because it's kind of stupid, but like, be- because, because they're always like clashing with each other, it, it gives, mm-hmm. it gives like the action scenes a little bit of comedy and it gives when it, it gives a scene that might be a little more dry just like a little bit of mm-hmm. something to do. Well, I mean, um, you you know who the voice of Anastasia is, right? I recognized her, but I don't know who it is. It's Meg Ryan, who was in Sleepless in Seattle. You've got mail. When Harry met Sally. Okay, so she was all of the rom-com actors. Kate and Leopold. From, like, she is the, she <laughs> is the 80s the and 90s. <laughs> She is the rom-com actress, like, and Dimitri is John Cusack, who also had his share of rom-coms in the early 2000s. They really leaned into the drift in making these two characters. Well, and and then also on top of that, Vladimir, uh, the, their friend, mm-hmm. Kelsey Grammer. Is that Kelsey Grammer? <laughs> That's Kelsey Boy. Grammer. Can you believe that shit? He's really throwing an accent in there. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't sound anything like Frasier. <laughs> but like, this would have I'm been a bad movie if he sounded like Frasier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at this cast, right? Meg Ryan, John Cusack, Kelsey Grammer, Christopher Lloyd, Angela Lansbury. Like, and in my head, I can like that's an amazing '90s rom com. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Well, except if it were a straight rom-com, I feel like Angela Lansbury and Christopher Lloyd would have gotten together, too. Yeah, at the end. Oh, gosh. As, like, the secondary oh. couple. <laughs> yeah, Rasputin and... <laughs> <laughs> that would be horrible. Oh, that's, that's terrible. That's he terrible. They killed her family. He, not, not, he didn't pull the trigger, though, right? He just, you know... I mean, he... I feel like he pulled the trigger. It's just everybody else was holding the guns. <laughs> He just cleared the line of sight is all. He cut the branches <laughs> off the trees. No, I think you're right. I think the, the rom-com aspect of this movie is nice. I do think that it's, it's, it, that not enough work is put into them going from like angry fighting to being in love. Like, I, I think it needed a little more like massaging. Okay. Again, though, it's a bit of band aid over it is they threw a song at it. That's true. <laughs> We're like, they start dancing together, and immediately Vlad starts singing a song that reminded me of the opening to Can You Feel the Love Tonight, where Timon is singing about how they're in so much trouble because Simba's gonna leave. It, like, it like very much reminded me of that, where he's like, I think our scam's in trouble because he's just fallen in love with her. Shit. <laughs> no, absolutely. I, um, I... So, uh, just to kind of get back to the the summary, mm-hmm. I guess, like... So we can actually get into the real movie. <laughs> Stop talking yeah, around so it. Anastasia, it, or sorry, Anya, uh, has been released, kicked out of, graduated from the orphanage. All of the above. And is told, hey, you have to go to the f- the fishing village. Oh, I, sure. I think that's its name. Um, yeah, there's a sign that says "Fishing Village." <laughs> I guess you go there if you want fish. So you want, yeah, and so it's basically like you, your, your head's in the clouds. You have to go to the fishing village and start working and start contributing to society, uh, and like get out of these dreams. And Anastasia gets like walks away, gets to this crossroads, literally Saint Petersburg or Fishing Village. And it makes basically makes the choice like, no, there's something important about these 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 memories that I keep trying to these things that I keep trying to remember. And I'm going to go chase that Mm -hmm. because that's that's going to take me to what my life needs to be. She wants to go to Paris because her she wants to go to Paris. Medallion says together in Paris. Um, But she doesn't remember who gave it to her. She doesn't remember why Paris is important. She just wants to get to mm-hmm. Paris. Yeah. At the same time, Dimitri and Vladimir are two con men. 
different Dimitri. The other one, he's dead. Um, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. This is a different guy. He's got Happens the same to hair. Have the same him. name. He has the same hair. He also has the. He grew into that haircut. Um, <laughs> but he also has this like little, uh, little. Um, uh, well, we know it's a music box, but he just thinks of it as like a like a, a jewelry box. Jewelry box, yeah. Because and because okay, in the past, the other Dimitri, no relation, when he, he when he was dragged out of the ball, uh, Anastasia called it a jewelry box because she didn't know it was a music box yet. So that's just, I guess, what he grew up assuming. If that was the mm-hmm. same guy, which is it, of course, it, is not. yeah, impossible. Yeah. Um, and so he has this jewelry box and he's like, and, 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 t- and, you know, we find out that the, the Grand Duchess Marie has offered 10 million rubles if somebody can find Anastasia and bring her to her. And so Dimitri and Vlad are like, this is easy. We're going to get an actress. We're going to teach her how to pretend to be Anastasia. We're going to give her this jewelry box. Bingo, bango, 10 million rubles right in her pocket. Uh, so they start holding tryouts and it doesn't go well for them. I feel like what it came down to is there was nobody the right age or sex, I think, was one of the jokes. Um, I don't want to I don't want to think about it, which, frankly, I feel like you could have written like needs to have this hair needs to be this like like you're hiring an actress. You can drill down a little bit to what it has to be. Yeah, the, the basic idea is just like there is there is nobody who who has all of the features necessary to look like Anastasia, which you're looking for a bl- blonde haired, blue eyed girl. Come on. In Eastern Europe, there's like a million of them. I don't know. She's got like brown hair. Is it brown? And it's, well, there you go. Maybe that's the yeah, problem. Yeah, it's like brown, maybe red, brown, maybe like a ruddy light. brown. Unclear. I'll be you know, honest, yeah. I don't know what color this is supposed to be, really. <laughs> So they can't, yeah, but they, they, they go back to their hideout, which is in, like, the, like, ruins They're in the of palace. the palace? Of the Winter Palace? It, it remains kind of the most confusing thing about this to me, that, like, two people have managed to make the Winter Palace their hideout. Like, ten years ago, everybody in this place was killed, and it was, like, looted, and now it's abandoned, and they just, like, chill there? They have a fire going. People have to know about it. People do know right, about no, it. At absolutely. least one random old lady at the train station knew about it. Because she knows that Dimitri can, I don't know, forge papers. No, she doesn't she doesn't break into the palace because she thinks Dimitri's there. She breaks into the palace because she remembers it. Well, either way, she breaks into the palace because the dog goes into the palace. So this is this is fucking movies, man. Like <laughs> This sequence, Fucking movies. this sequence is legitimately one of the best things I've ever seen. I believe that when they did do the musical, they saved this song for the end of Act One. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because makes sense. I think the biggest problem with this scene and this song is it happened so early and i think it is far and above the best scene in the movie oh yeah <laughs> it's it's just like the rest of the time when you're watching this movie you're kind of thinking you're kind of thinking of that scene in that song instead of what's what you're supposed to be watching it is it, it is it overpowers the rest of the movie. I I have I watched this movie yesterday and I cannot stop thinking about this scene. It's it so the Anastasia gets into this palace. She's in the, she's in the grand ballroom. There's all these like there's like dust everywhere. There's all these portraits hanging on the wall. They've been like defaced. Um mm-hmm. and she starts like seeing like memories of her childhood and she's like oh i've been here and she starts singing this song that she remembers from her childhood once upon a december and as she starts dancing through the dust sorry like there's something important that i want to say about once upon a december she does not remember this song she remembers the tune and she remembers that it ends with once upon a december and that's yeah. my maybe my favorite part is that she's making up all the other lyrics and like everything else. Is, yeah, 
Yeah, and she's, she's you know, singing about what's happening to her, how she's, like, trying to remember this, and there's all this stuff that she used to know, but that's not what the original song's about. It's just a song about how, like, two people are gonna see each other again. And she doesn't even know that. I It's kind of, I love it. No, it's it's really good, and so, and, like, then as the dust, like, swirls up around her, um, the paintings, like, the people in the paintings, like, burst out of them. Yeah, they're, like, into... stepping out of the paintings. But it, it's more violent than that, right? Because of the, <laughs> the the way the dust animates. And they start dancing in this grand ball. And, like, it's haunting. It is genuinely haunting to, to see in this dilapidated, like, run down, this place that used to be so grand, the literal ghosts yeah, and they're, like, overlaid over it. Like, the whole time, I feel like you're never completely swept away from the present, so there's always just, no. like, a little bit of, like, you can tell this is fake, but over top of it is all, the like, glitz and glamour that used to be there. And she dances with, like, three to five faceless guys who all look like Prince Charming from uh, Sleeping Beauty, and then dances with her own dad, and this scene... When you, I feel like I, when I watched it this time, I found it genuinely a little heartbreaking because she doesn't know who that is. No. She like remembers this face and dances it's with the him. only and, face too. And does not remember why he's important. And the, the promise of, of this moment, there are things that you see, right? In movies that I think help you understand how movies work. Mm -hmm. This scene is a, a, a master class in how, how you portray in animation the pain of a memory. I'm, I'm going to go a little further than that. Not even in animation. Um, Chimmy really yes. likes Les Mis. Okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And she hates the movie Les Mis, because it's not very good. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so we were watching it one time, but all we were really doing was fast forwarding to like the scenes that were good and like watching yeah, those yeah. and fast forwarding. We got to empty chairs and empty tables, which is one of the last yes. songs. The movie really yes. should end on it because it is the most powerful song in the second half of the, of the thing. It is after the revolution. Everybody is dead except for this yep. one guy yeah, th these were all like college students, basically, who who had this revolution, and they were just like, you know, tomorrow's going to be great. We're gonna, we're gonna, everything's going to be good as soon as we do this. And he goes back to the bar they were drinking at, and is just singing about all the empty chairs and empty tables because they're all gone now. And because this, I don't know who directed this movie, but whoever directed this movie watched too many musicals and not enough fucking movies, because the whole time it's just zoomed in on his head as he sings this, and I got angry. I was like, why isn't it showing people at the tables who aren't really there? That's how you do this! And, and just the fact that this movie is just immediately like, here is the important thing. None of this exists anymore. Here is all of the great stuff here. Heck, if they had this scene and didn't have the prologue scene, I think it would be even more powerful because this would be the first time you'd seen it. No, I I agree, and I oh, it's, it's so good that you brought that up. Um, so f w real quick, the the person who directed the film version of Les Mis was Tom Hooper, who is, I think, now more well known for directing Cats in 2019. <laughs> Um, <laughs> God, give him another one. <laughs> God bless. God bless. Uh, what what a guy. <laughs> Andy and I watched I, that movie together because Andy wanted to, and we didn't even do it for the podcast. We just tortured ourselves. I love it. It's it's genuinely it brings me joy <laughs> watching it. Uh, it's so bad. It's. It's unforgivably terrible. Um, the <laughs> I think it is worth watching Anastasia nineteen ninety seven alone just to have that scene happen to you. If you are looking at like how how do I how do I adapt 
a musical to cinema? I think this is a big, this is a question that I don't think anyone's really answered properly. How do you do a musical in a movie? I know how you don't do it. I feel like, right? Because I feel like you've, we've seen a lot of ways that it's not, where it doesn't quite work. And I think a lot of that is because a lot of directors want to make it feel like a musical. Les Mis also ends with everybody, with basically a curtain call scene. Yeah. And it's like fucking weird for a movie. It's, uh, yeah, uh, apparently that's what heaven looks like. Yeah, it's, it's just like, it's just odd um and it should not do that (laughs) but like what's what's the best movie musicals i've seen i mean probably just like little shop of horrors Uh, Mm um and i think that's just because frank oz directed both the musical and the movie and knew how to like make it look good yeah i i I, I definitely don't think that there is like a standout musical film that is like good. <laughs> um, well, or or to the point that it's like everybody should be doing this. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Instead, absolutely. what you usually get is something like Les Mis, where people are like, "Oh, this was this was okay, but it wasn't as good as I first thought when I watched it," or something like Cats, where people are like, "This is the strangest thing ever put to screen." And yeah. it's kind of amazing that it exists. It's not good, obviously, but it's, it sure is something. I think it's why animated animated movies have really like kept the 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 musical alive in a way because mm-hmm. animated movies already exist in this like space in this place that is like real life, but but more fantastical and like. It's really hard, I think, in a musical with live action people to like t- to have audiences just buy into buy into just the fact that sometimes people are going to be singing. It used to be a very common thing. They, <laughs> yeah, it used like, to be. It used all, to be all movies were. <laughs> all movies at least had like a song in it. <laughs> Presumably so you could get it on the radio. I don't know. Mm hmm. Uh, I like, you know, uh, Tick, Tick, Boom was really good. Mm. Directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda. I think the first thing, first movie he ever directed. But like, it's, it, it, it also, it's kind of, it also is kind of boring. Like it has one, I think, show stopping musical number where it really like uses the power of film. The, the performances are great, but direct, direct, the, the directing it doesn't utilize like what you can do with a movie to its fullest extent to create melodrama and to create like, vi- like, like a visual that makes you go, holy shit, this is movies. Right. Uh-huh. Um, and I think that like the, that, that this once upon a December, this whole sequence, I, I, I think there are people who all they remember from this movie is that, that song. Oh, certainly. And that's enough, it's, right? It's <laughs> like it's literally the most memorable part. It's, it just sticks in your head like you can't stop thinking about it. I think there's a beautiful irony in that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> in this, uh, it, 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 because because I, I get it. Like, I had never seen this movie before in my life. This is a movie that I heard people talk about, and I was like, it's not a fucking Disney movie. I don't give a shit. That's, that's who I was. <laughs> um, don't talk to me uh, if it's I'm not sorry. Little Mermaid. I was going to say, I'm sorry, does a girl get her legs? <laughs> I'm glad we thought of the same one. <laughs> um, but I get it. Like, this is, I think this is a movie that almost by accident, it's, it's, it's better when you, it's better in your memory than it is watching it. <laughs> like, and that's, so funny and so, like like i i think if you're a person who watched anastasia as a kid and you think to yourself oh should i go back and watch it no the there is a beautiful thing in your head listen to the music remember keep keep the the that, that beautiful thing pristine don't touch it anymore and if you've never seen it before i i do think you should go watch it because this scene alone is worth remembering anyway don bluth was a good director 
I feel like he couldn't write movies that well. He got he, no terrible. <laughs> I watched a lot of bullshit Tom Bluth movies, but like they look good. <laughs> We're gonna have to watch Thumbelina at some point, and like every nice thing that I have said about this is gonna go out the window. <laughs> Um, it's going to. It's tr- truly unfortunate. Don Bluth only gets two movies after this. This is his like second to his third to last. Hmm. Oh man, this should have been his last. Anyway, oh. <laughs> it's like a too far into it. Yeah, they, Dimitri and Vladimir hear this crazy woman singing, and they're like, "Who the hell are you? What are you doing here?" Um, and so, yeah, she runs off and they catch her when she's like standing in front of a picture of herself. And yeah. she's like, holy shit. And actually, I think does really well with playing with that thing in movies where like when the guy meets the girl, he's like, <gasps> and he like just finally sees how beautiful she is. I like that it's like that, except he's just like, holy crap, she looks just like the girl that we're trying to pretend we have oh my god she's perfect for our con (laughs) yeah it's it's like it's great that's a good little twist on it and there's a good gag where where he's where he said vlad do you see what i see Vlad's like no and he pulls his glasses down (laughs) yes um so they 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 have a little bit of a back and forth they don't like each other but dimitri's like listen come with us we get you to france and who knows? Maybe you're the real Anastasia. If you are, great. We found your family. If you're not, great. We got you to Paris. The it's a win-win. F- fascinating thing is that Dimitri's first thought is that he's also going to con this girl. I kind of like it. It's a it's a bit of a wrinkle, a bit of an unnecessary wrinkle when like she's an orphan and he could say there's money in this. <laughs> Listen, there's money but, in this. But instead he's like, I don't know, maybe you're Anastasia. Who knows? Why don't we go meet the Dowager and find out if she thinks you're Anastasia? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, it, I mean, it's especially because of the ending of this movie, there's so much going on. <laughs> so, at the same time, Bartok is watching this happen and is like, that's crazy if she's the real Anastasia. Sorry, because sorry, that- sorry, sorry, sorry. Bartok is a tiny albino bat. And I feel yes. like you can't just say Bartok is watching. <laughs> Without mentioning he's a little bat who I believe we're going to watch a whole movie about next. I cannot believe that we're going to watch a whole movie about this character. It's crazy. <laughs> Don Blue's sequel uh, movies are something else. I'll tell you what. They, they really are. So uh, Bartok is like, that'd be crazy. And then the reliquary that he's been uh, safe keeping for the past decade starts I glowing just, and I- then... Dr- Part of me is like, what's he doing just hanging out in the rafters with this reliquary? Another part of me is like, he's a bat. What else is he going to do? Yeah, what else is he going to do? Uh, and then it drags him to hell. I mean, purgatory. <laughs> Still bad. Still bad. Not not as bad. It, I feel like it's a pretty hell-looking purgatory. Well, Rasputin doesn't technically have a soul, so I think he might he might have been bodily dragged into purgatory, uh, and is just sort of falling apart down there. Yeah, it's rotting. He is like, great, now that I have my reliquary back, I can finish my lifelong mission to kill all the Romanovs. I kind of wanted him to get something out of this. You know the bad gang, Princess and the Frog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a reason that he wanted to curse the prince. I don't remember <laughs> what it was, but I think it was like a like a magical c- curse reason why he had to do it and like take over this kingdom or something like that. Um and I just wish that like it had been thrown out that yeah, if he kills the last Romanov, he'll his body will be restored or something, you know? Like the reason mm-hmm. that he's like this is because he says that the reason he's like this is because he hasn't finished his curse. Um however, personally I would take limbo over hell. 
Because, like, where does he think he's going? <laughs> after he kills Anastasia and he's no longer like bound by the curse. I feel like he's shooting right down into hell. Yeah. That's the thing, right? Is maybe he want, and, and I guess what he, what he gets out of it is he gets to finally die. Maybe he, Unclear. he just, he seems to want to kill Anastasia because he wants to kill Anastasia, which I guess he doesn't need that much more out of it, but I kind of wish there was something. No, Absolutely. Because, like, at the end, Bartok's like, oh, I don't know, I thought we weren't going to do this anymore. I was hoping that I could talk you out of it. And it's like... We could just hang out. I didn't... Yeah. (laughs) Strange. Um, So, the... Yeah, so he gets his thing back, he sings sings a song about how he's going to kill Anastasia, and starts sending demons after her. Yeah, they, he, he, they're on a, they're on a train, um... Uh, that's making its way to France, but unfortunately, their their uh, their train gets derailed. Um, by, yeah, it really interrupts fact- Anastasia's and Dimitri's hate flirting. Uh, and Vlad yes. in the corner keeping score, which was a good gag. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Vlad the, gets all they, the good gags. He really does. They make their way. Uh, kind of set walking into uh, Germany, I think. Um, yeah, and that's when they get the song. So I guess they are walking, driving, and horseback riding into Germany. Yeah. Uh, from Russia. So, like, that probably took him a grip. <laughs> For sure. They eventually, um, as they're walking through Germany, trying to get to France are teaching Anastasia the history of her, of the Romanov family and also how to act like a royal. Mm-hmm. Um, which they can do because Vladimir used to be a member of the royal court. So so he has a little bit of a, I don't know what the word is here. Oh, inside knowledge? Yeah, insider baseball of, of you know, how to, how to do this and how to do that. We find out that uh, Dimitri's bad at acting like a royal. Which is fair. I mean, the basic thing about Dimitri seems to be that even though he's like a hot dude, he's like, he's common. He's he's a normal guy. Yeah, he doesn't the have only that reason special he's royal here blood. Is the only reason he's here is that he, he got the music box. But he's like, he's, he's common as muck. And it's not like a, necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> he is, yeah, all, like, what, what he has is his charm and his wits. Mm-hmm. But but also Anastasia is more charming and wittier than him. <laughs> yeah, that's why he doesn't like her. So uh, eventually they get on a boat. I don't understand why they need to get on a boat. Actually, now that I think about it, but they do. Well, they said we're gonna take a boat to France from Germany. So I guess they get on a boat because they said they were gonna get on a boat. I. Yeah, but they're like touching is I don't know, listen. Maybe they took it. Maybe it's a riverboat. I don't know. No, it couldn't That's have been. That's not a fucking riverboat. Did you see that storm? That yeah, was a they get hit river by a, storm. So they get they get hit. They are on a boat. There a storm hits them while they're at that sea. That looked like that looked like when Fivehole fell off the boat. Like I'm pretty sure it, it's the it, same storm. <laughs> That's unlikely. I, I think they reused some of their animation assets here a little bit. Um, it's too bad that they didn't um, reuse that big demon five will sees because that would have been cool. Uh, but they oh, do that would have been cool. Genuinely <laughs> creepier, <laughs> which this, is um, this scene Anastasia's is bananas. In like an evil Lunesta commercial. <laughs> You know, you remember the Lunesta commercials with the barfly? <laughs> yeah, this is genuinely like haunting imagery. Like, like this is some cursed shit. Anastasia sees a little boy. Now, viewers, the movie doesn't say this, but uh, this little boy is her younger brother <laughs> who is dead. She, but that's that's what's genuinely so haunting about it. She doesn't know who any of these people are. She gets to, she's following this so, little boy, like, so, through this, so, like, so, meadow. So, 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 <laughs> sorry, this is, Rasputin has sent her this, this, uh, 
oh yeah, yeah, yeah nightmare yeah. dream <laughs> that is gonna get her to like get up and, and walk around at the night but the things he's sending her are probably what he assumes that she would love to see, which is her family alive and well and having fun. But she doesn't know who these people are. It's like working because it's like whatever dream logic. But just watching it and thinking like she doesn't know that those are her sisters. She doesn't know that that's that, that, her dad. Like it is. <laughs> it is then- what makes it a haunting scene. Yeah, no, it's genuinely cursed. And then, like, Dimitri gets up, notices she's gone, chases her down, and, like, grabs her before she, like, walks overboard. But, like... And when <laughs> when he grabs her, the yeah, train yeah. changes into demons grabbing her. So she wants to, like, push him away. It's so good. Honestly, it's this really should have worked. Good. Rasputin, he worked really hard this, on this one. <laughs> this, this one should have done it. <laughs> I know he blew up a train, but this one should have worked. No, absolutely, this one should have worked. So, uh, at the, Rasputin's fed up. He's like, "All right, that's it, Bartok. We've got to go to the surface." And he, he, you know, him and Bartok fire themselves out of limbo, um, and which apparently he could have done this whole time. This whole time, and I will say also, he proceeds to not be in like the next thirty minutes of the movie. Yeah, because yeah, you, when, if if you so this is your first time watching it, and I'm going to ask you, did you forget that he was going to show up again? Legitimately, I was like, when he shows up again, I was like, oh, fuck, that's right. We haven't really <laughs> taken care of. But this, sorry, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Also, they don't know that all of that shit that's been happening to them is Rasputin. No, they just think that like a train blew up. That sucked, and she almost walked off. And the, yeah, she had like a nightmare dream. reaction to it when she wakes up is she's like crying and talking about how she was seeing faces because the faces of the family she can't remember, and it's freaking her out. So Dimitri's just like, I, hey, I guess it was just a bad night. I guess it was just a bad dream. And so, so at, at, at like like we're we're gonna get to it, but like at the end of the movie, he shows up and she's just like, okay. The wildest part of the movie is the fact that this character, who was not in a fantasy movie until this point, is like, time to fight a wizard. Time to fight a wizard. Have you ever punched a wizard before? But he Me neither. But but I'm going to. (laughs) But also he does get a I I do love that scene because it allows Anastasia to face off with Rasputin, but because he's stuck fighting a giant stone Pegasus. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> D- Dimitri fight is fighting a demon Pegasus. It sort of it sort of mirrors the scene in um, Aladdin when Jafar's like shooting magic at everybody and like trapping them and turning them in, into stuff so he can yeah, so he fights yeah, Aladdin yeah. alone. Except if. All that stuff he shot magic out was just, like, stuff coming alive to kill those guys. And it would keep cutting to them also fighting. Here's And, and here's genu- the thing, I, right? I love every action scene of this movie. Here, here's the thing, though, is is Dimitri should have been bodied by this giant stone horse. <laughs> he fucking... There's I, a moment where the hoof comes down and he's rolled out of the way. The hoof is as big as he is. And yet we cut back and he's like waving a stick at it like don't worry anastasia i got this it's like dude you do not got this i do kind of i do kind of wish that there was a a sidekick character who could have pointed out that he did not got this actually where was vladimir during all of this actually now that i think i guess he was at the he was he's married now he's he was getting some okay vladimir worked hard he worked hard and now he's married and they're they're gonna uh Bartov just left. Bartov like, just uh, left because he was uncomfortable Bart- with murder. Yeah, it was it was like the scene where Gonzo leaves um a Muppet Christmas Carol for a while because it gets too scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was exactly like that. Um all right, so so Sorry, just, to, just to catch up to here real quick. They get to France, and unfortunately for them, the Grand Duchess is like, I am fucking tired of all these people pretending to be my granddaughter. I'm just too sad. I don't, I mean, don't want to see this shit anymore. 
Oh, maybe she should have offered ten million. Totally valid. Yeah. Um. So they get in there and they're like, "We have to go see. Uh, we need to see the Grand Duchess." And um, the her secretary is like, "Well, you pass, but the Grand Duchess doesn't want to see anybody anymore." Which is like, why the fuck did you test them for six hours if you're going to tell them this? Um, because she's in love with Vlad. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. She just wanted to hang out with Vlad for six hours. Yeah. Vlad convinces her to, they go to a play. A Russian ballet, I think. Oh, it's yeah, Cinderella. Yeah, yes, in France. It is Cinderella. I also noticed that. Which was a good, but not perfect mirror of Anastasia. If you're going to pick one of the classics, it would probably be Cinderella. Maybe Sleeping Beauty. If it was me, I would have picked Swan Princess. <laughs> <laughs> literally the most famous russian production that's not a disney movie i feel like the i feel like the big thing was making it a disney movie that they were doing oh no i get that but i think that it's much easier to punch down than to punch up <laughs> yeah you know what they put a production of cinderella in this movie and disney was like i'm gonna bide my time until i can buy all of 20th century fox <laughs> just for this reason I'm going to acquire the Simpsons. <laughs> Hank Azaria, you're going to be voicing Bartok for the rest of your life. <laughs> no, um, do you know what they did? Do you know what fucking Disney did? After this movie was announced, Disney announced the following weekend would be the, rele- the re-release the, uh, of Little Mermaid in theaters. Oh, <laughs> to, to fucking steal the audience. And it was a huge marketing campaign oh, for for that. That's pretty shameful, actually. That's absolutely shitty. <laughs> um, that's, that's gross. And then you also had Hercules come out that year, which that's no, non-compete, unfortunately, for Hercules. At the end of the play, Dimitri goes to see the Grand Duchess, and she's like, uh, get the fuck out of here. You just want my $10 million reward. You don't even care about whatever poor girl you've dragged here from Russia. Uh, she was also at one point mentions like, oh, I heard about you. You were having open auditions. What the fuck is okay, wrong with okay. you? This, this is... This is the most buckwild part. I know that Anastasia and Dimitri have to fight, and it's not... I'm not going to compare it to Shrink and Donkey, which I do like to do, uh, because mm-hmm. I feel like there are real stakes in this fight at the part of the third act. But how the hell did she hear about this? He was secretly running auditions out of her old palace. I guess it wasn't at her at her own palace. It was at the theater. But still, like, <laughs> does I, she I have a know. bunch of spies in St. Petersburg just, like, watching the theater productions? <laughs> Biding their time. It's strange. I have no idea, but she brings this up, and Anastasia's immediately like, oh, this motherfucker. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, honestly, some stuff clicks into place. Like, he worked really hard to get her here. (laughs) He really did. So, he gets thrown out of the room by some guards. She slaps it. She slaps him? I felt that slap. Oh, also important, though, at this moment, Dimitri believes Anastasia to actually be Anastasia because she told the story of how he, Twist, was the one who who saved her from Uh, the palace by opening up the wall. Can can you believe that Dimitri is the little boy Dimitri? Wow. (laughs) Biggest twist of the movie. I had no idea. (laughs) So... (laughs) <laughs> the he's fully believes that she's the real thing. Have we ever seen in any of this kind of movie the lead slap just absolutely slap the shit out of a prince? <sighs> now I know Flynn gets panned. It's very physical, is the thing. And like this is one of the things that Don Bluth does. I mean, you see it with like Rasputin, where he's like falling apart and eventually turns into yeah, a freaking yeah, yeah. skeleton. Where he does not, like, point the camera away when stuff like this happens. So, yeah, just the fact that there's the, like, the slap. And it doesn't, like, cut to black. It doesn't, like... No. She, like, knocks him, walks away, and then when he gets back up to try and chase her, like, two other dudes are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. (laughs) The lady said no, my friend. (laughs) Yeah. Good on you, French rich people who want to go see a ballet. <laughs> I, I genuinely, I was like, I, I think that scene is good. It's very cool. Violence is wrong and all that. But that the, when she slaps him, I was like, ooh, are you going to come back from this one, Dimitri? Well, he's going to kidnap somebody. <laughs> so, yeah, what he does is he kidnaps the Grand Duchess. <laughs> 
drives her to the apartment that I have a question Anastasia was staying in. I have a question. Yeah. And and I mean, I don't want to belabor this because I expected mm-hmm. this was a real person who had a real history and, and life and this terrible thing happened to. Yeah. But is she only the Grand Duchess because she's not going back to Russia? If she goes back to Russia, is she still the Grand Duchess? Or is she, like, dead? Hold on a second. I think I have been mistitling her. Is Anastasia the Grand Duchess? She's the Dowager or something. She's the Dowager Empress. Not the Grand Duchess. Dowager Empress. Well, okay. So she... Okay. So so she's the the mother of the Emperor. I suppose even if the Emperor dies, she could still remain Dowager Empress. (laughs) Yeah, so she so kind of she married into the family, which means she's not eligible uh, under royal law for the crown. But yeah, I I'm, I I think if she uh, if uh, in this historical time frame, I think if she had even gone back to Russia, it would not have it probably would not have gone well for her. Right. So yes, he kidnaps her. It's going great. <laughs> Yeah, he kidnaps her, drives her to the apartments. Like, listen, Anastasia's in there. At the very least, go talk to her because she needs this. I don't, I, I don't give a shit about you or your money. He gives her the music box and is basically like, I saved your life. Go talk to this girl. Oh, <laughs> I was man, honestly what a- waiting for him to play that card. <laughs> The, he doesn't ever say it, right? Like, she says it, and he's just like, I don't want to talk about it. It was a bad day. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> she goes and talks to Anastasia. They have a little conversation, and Anastasia's like, oh, I can, you're wearing a peppermint perfume. I remember, I remember that. And then they, she shows her the necklace and undoes the music box, and they sing the lullaby together. And oh my God, they found each other. And if you if, if you cannot believe it, Rasputin still hasn't come back into this movie yet. Well, so first there has to be the announcement that they found Anastasia, and they're gonna throw a I don't know exactly what kind of party this is. Maybe it's something like a of ball? a coming of age party, <laughs> like yeah, bar mitzvah. Yeah, so sort of, but uh. And then that gets published in the newspaper, and Rasputin's like, aha, she'll, she'll go to the party, and that's where I'll kill her. Uh, because he no longer just wants to kill her, he wants her to feel bad about it. Yeah, so he, he goes to the party. Dimitri uh, is summoned by by uh, the Empress, the Dowager Empress, and she's like, hey, here's your money. Uh, and he's like, unilaterally, no. Now, hold up, there was another guy. <laughs> Here's the thing, Vlad does not seem to care. I think he got everything he wanted out of this, really, which was possibly for the Dowager Empress to be grateful enough to him that he would be allowed to marry her cousin who works for her. I don't know. Yeah, something like that, for sure, for sure. It's never really clear what he got out of it, except that he looks pretty happy in his regalia. Maybe he just wanted to be a part of something again. Yeah. But he apparently did not need this five million rubles that he was going to get. Yeah, I mean, listen, listen. It's it's the 1920s. Monarchy is dead. Republics are on the rise. Why can't this guy just marry my cousin? Why not? <laughs> Why not? It's not like anything bad's going to happen in 20 years. Look, Vlad is as older. <laughs> He'll be all right. He'll be all right. Again, this movie is like li- crushed on both sides by history. It's truly look, unfortunate. Look, <laughs> you can't you can't fucking read a Jeeves and Wooster book without thinking about history. You you it's gotta tough. turn it off a little. <laughs> it's you got you have to you have to. It's so hard for me, but you have to. You're absolutely right. Um, so Dimitri leaves, sees Anastasia in the hall, and she's like, "Oh, you, 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 you know, you're gonna you're gonna run with your fucking money, you rat!" And he's like, "That's right, that's what I'm doing. I'll miss you. Bye." <laughs> that's kind of what happens. And he leaves, <laughs> and she's upset. I don't genuinely don't know how much time passes between this and the ball. I think she's getting ready for the ball when this is happening. So like a few hours, maybe a few. Yeah. Before the Empress decides to tell her, hey, you know, he didn't take the money, right? Look, look, here's the thing. She's had a busy day. She's trying to schedule a fucking ball. And short notice. (laughs) She's a dowager Empress. She isn't trying to do anything. Other people do that for her. But there's the moment where after they have this conversation about like, where she basically gives her, I don't want to call it an ultimatum because it's nicer than that. It's permission, I think. What she basically says is you can either be Princess Anastasia 
or you could go elope with your guy. <laughs> and she says, either way, I'll still be here. Like, we'll still have each other. But, like, mm-hmm. you don't have to be the princess. That doesn't need to be your life. Yeah. But then, after she has a conversation, she fucking leaves. Like, she still has to run that party. <laughs> yeah, she's like, all right, well, I gotta go, gotta go out and talk to people and stuff. Bye. When I said I'll be here for you, I meant for the next two minutes. <laughs> I meant we'll write each other letters. <laughs> yeah, we'll write each other letters. I meant come visit sometime. Schedule it first. <laughs> Dimitri is at a train station. Okay, so the this might genuinely be my least favorite bit of the movie. Because he's at it's the train banana. station, he reaches in his pocket, looks at a rose that he had, that he'd gotten during like a musical sequence when they were all getting changed, and smiles at it. And I'm supposed to know, this means he's going to run back during her party and confess to Anastasia And that means he's going to be there in the finale. And like, why? (laughs) So many other times in this movie, right? Don Bluth shows us characters making a decision. And for for some reason, this incredibly big decision, (laughs) we don't get to see Dimitri make it. He smiles at a rose and then it cuts to Anastasia fighting a wizard. I wonder if they cut a scene here that like wasn't working or something. This movie is 94 minutes long. They had space, right? Like, I don't know. You don't want to turn into, um, oh, I can't, I can't remember the name of that movie. What's the name of that legendary, unfinished, released three times, terrible oh, movie that was supposed to be really good? The Thief and the Cobbler? Yeah, Thief and the Cobbler. We're like, you don't want to go all perfectionist on your movie because, If you do, it might be a legendary 30-year-in-production movie that ends up released terribly because you never bent on anything, and eventually a studio just took it from you and was like, we'll finish this in a week. I don't think it ever technically came out. Um, I think there were actually a couple, maybe like one semi-official release and then some others. Anyway, the point is, the point is, sometimes you gotta give on on something i have to assume there used to be a scene there because otherwise it doesn't make any sense i get the feeling that um it it was probably just a time thing like you know what this movie needs to come out in a month we don't need to finish animating this scene we can we can cut it here (laughs) that's what it feels like to me by the way just real quick i have i just opened up the thief in the cobbler wikipedia and it is the most depressing wikipedia page in the world (laughs) because every single uh animator and actor involved in this movie passed away oh that is sad and the wikipedia page decided that it was entirely necessary to put their dates of death in the preamble to the page (laughs) what just put a name you can click through (laughs) i genuinely don't know why they did this it's it's truly depressing um, rip to a real one. Richard Williams was a old guard animator. This, we got to talk about this. Hey, Robert this final still scene. around anyway. <laughs> oh, is he good for Sorry. him? <laughs> this final scene is on the one hand, it's great because it is absolutely the wildest way to end this movie. Uh huh. But on the other hand, it's so tonally not what this movie has been leading up to. It is. It is strange because you're right. There's like been a half hour of movie that had. That, that was just, like, people talking. And, like, the personal drama of, like, human interaction. Anastasia and her grandmother. Anastasia and Dimitri. Dimitri and the Dowager Empress. Just, like, everybody, like, clashing with each other. And the build-up is all social-emotional. And then we get this one where it's, like, a wizard's like, I'm going to kill you, Anastasia! <laughs> <laughs> and and the best part is, is that she just looks at him and is like, I know who you are. You're Rasputin. And it's like, whoa. Well, something we didn't mention is that she watched him die once. Oh, my God. That's that is correct. At the very beginning of this movie. After they escape from the from the palace, he chases them down on like a frozen lake and the lake cracks under him and he, you know, sinks under the water. And I guess we have to be given to assume that this is when he died and was stuck in limbo. But yeah, so she watched him die. She remembers him, did not remember her dad without a lot of prompting. (laughs) 
So she looks at him and is like, I know who you are, Rasputin. And he's like, that's right. You watched me die. And then <laughs> and he's like, I don't know who you are, Rasputin. <laughs> He does do that. He does. He, he gets. He gets pretty passive aggressive about it. He, he is so petty. And then he like they, he starts having a wizard duel, and she punches him in the face. And she's she. He like cracks the bridge under her, and she's gonna fall into the river. And he's like, "No one can save you." And then Dimitri punches him in the face. Then he, he shoots this magic horse at Dimitri, which is awesome, and the dog starts biting his legs, so he sends, like, a single demon to fight the dog. <laughs> There's one point where the, the bridge breaks, and Dimitri thinks that Anastasia fell into the water, and he goes to jump into the water, and the, the Pegasus, the demon Pegasus, flies up and, like, bodies him instead. <laughs> it's so great! And I do, and, and, and there's genuinely... What I love about this movie that a lot of, you know, the classic Disney princess movies don't do is it allows Anastasia to finish this fight. Oh, like, she kills I, him. I love Little Mermaid, but Eric oh, fucking killed Ursula. Absolutely. Ariel, Ariel is sitting there doing nothing. Ariel did not get a hand on that ball. <laughs> She gets his reliquary and, like, steps on it three times. Doesn't do a one yeah. and done. She makes him suffer. And it, like... It explodes, and a green beam of light shoots down at him, and he is, like, dissolved again, like, layer by layer. Like, the skin comes off, and then- And his, then the meat. And I mean, the, the bones, and then the bones turn into ash, and then immediately blow away. <laughs> All good. All good stuff. But as this happens, the, the big stone horse falls apart, and, and a giant rock knocks Dimitri in the head, killing him instantly. <laughs> I almost had a problem with this scene because she just starts crying, but I was like, whatever, she's like 18, she's never had medical training. <laughs> yeah, like... And he's pretty immediately like, ow. <laughs> yeah, he gets up, she punches him in the face, and then they kiss, and they're in love. And she leaves a letter for her grandmother, which is a little impersonal, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, she's, the grandma's the one who said letters only. So, or is that our head cannon? <laughs> That's our head cannon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they they lope. She leaves a letter for the grandma. Her and Dimitri are you know going to go off on who knows whatever adventures await them in ni- in nineteen twenties uh, Europe. I assume they're not going to go far from Paris because if she does not regularly visit her grandmother, it's fucking wild. <laughs> I gotta tell you what, man, they better be going far from Paris. Look, they can, look, she she keeps escaping all this boring stuff. She's fine. She's fine. She's fine. So she'll be fine. What a movie. It's it's kind of a bad movie, but I, I really do think it's it, it really is held up by the fact that like there is no no animated movie looks like this. Uh it's it's almost like a lot less stylized than you come to expect. Mm-hmm, but in a way mm-hmm. that still looks good, it's odd to talk about. There's a part of me that's like, oh, like, I, Don Bluth really was the person who made movies look like this, right? Like, Disney at this point had moved away from, from the, that, that style, that kind of rotoscope style that you would see in, like, Cinderella, right? Into the more, like, stylized, classic Disney look that we associate with them in the 90s. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I'm trying to think, you know, like, like, there, there really is something special about the way this movie looks and feels as animation. I, I wish, more animated movies looked like this. I look at something like, um, I, I don't know, what's the last, like, big animated movie that came out? But, like... I mean, Spider-Verse. <laughs> Spider-Verse, which, which is a, a whole other conversation. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't point at Spider-Verse and start talking down about its style. <laughs> that would be wild. Um, no, absolutely. But every Disney movie is looking the same right now. You know, they all have just that 3D look that they, to be fair, have perfected in the way that they wanted to perfect it. But I don't know. It just looks a little soulless to me compared to these old older ones. I don't think anything out there looks like this. That alone and that and also just again, the there are parts of this movie that really work. And I, I definitely think that this movie is like worth remembering. So next time we're going to watch a movie about the bat. 
Yeah. So remember when we talked about the bat fucking twice. <laughs> we talked about yeah. We talked about the bat for a total of thirty seconds. We're gonna get ninety whole minutes of this motherfucker. I don't know what he's what kind of fun antics he's gonna get up to. I at the end of this movie, we didn't mention a a, a sexy girl bat shows up out of nowhere to ma- to mac on him. I genuinely don't know why this movie exists. We're gonna find out. <laughs> Well, this is this is the only direct spinoff that Don Bluth was had like was directly involved with. So he's going to bring the magic, maybe. Oh, this was directed by Don Bluth. Yeah, it sure was. What a strange, strange, strange choice. Thank you for listening to direct to video. VHS? VHS? I have been your host on your boost out. I have been your host, Andy Reyes. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, probably, for some amount of time, at TheaterBats. <laughs> for as and, long as it's and my allowed. website, inspiredbytrueevents.org. At some point, I think legally no one's going to be allowed to be on Twitter anymore. Oh, we're going to get to that point. Yeah. I have been, I am currently notoriously I, impossible to find. Um, I dusted off my Tumblr password the other day, like, hey, is this still working? <laughs> I, you know, I got to say, I logged into my Tumblr like three months ago and I was like, no, nah, st- I'm still not there yet. I still don't know how to work Tumblr. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what Tumblr is about. But you know what? If you're in, if you're in, uh, if you're going to be in Chicago, you might see me there. <laughs> That's where I'll be. <laughs> Just like around. Are you going to Chicago? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be going to Chicago. Um, probably by the time this comes out, I'll have come back. <laughs> so, oh, okay. so I'm, it's well. just for a trip. It's just for a day trip. Um, but yeah, I'm around in real life. It's not like the last time you went to Chicago. No, where I was there for for quite a significant amount of time. Yeah, I guess go find Andy in real life, mm-hmm. and find us at Direct Two dot Video. Yep. Or the or on YouTube at Direct to Video Podcast. Heck yeah! Yes. We got some comments about maybe doing Land Before Time, but I don't know if we're going to be able to cross that bridge. It's, I think we can, we can do it, but we have to, it has to be a one and done. We can't do all of them. Absolutely <laughs> not. We, we, we maybe just to like wrap up the Bluthiverse. Uh, well, it's going to be a while till we get to wrap up the Bluthiverse, to be honest. We mm-hmm. haven't seen all dogs go to heaven or Thumbelina <laughs> Or Titan AE. And we haven't played the laser disc game Dragon Slayer. Did you know that was Don Bluth? <laughs> I did actually. I did know that was Don Bluth. It's uh it's a that is a kind of a big point of like video game history is Dragon's Lair. Well, because it was like a 2D animated video game, which is Buck Wild. <laughs> For for 1983, it was un it was uh, uh it was an unthinkable achievement. Yeah, I bet you it's bad. Yeah, in the year of our Lord 2023, uh, it's it's functionally not a video game. <laughs> <laughs> Did we say all the things? Uh, well, we want to we, we want to give a things. big thanks. We want to give a big thanks to Lee Rosevere. Nope, we don't. No, we don't. God damn it, you're right. Uh, to Scott I mean, Buckley. Scott Buckley. Homeward. Link to that's in the description where I had to go quick find it because I... Because it's been a while since we recorded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's uh, the real answer because I got a, a job and Andy's got a job and we're working and never do this. <laughs> yeah, I I gotta tell you, man, I was in Roswell, New Mexico for a month. Really? Yeah, that's... It was rough. (laughs) It's not good. (laughs) Um, I'll have to talk to you about it, because it was wild. Yeah. If you're listening to this on iTunes, please give us five stars, or, you know, whatever star you you think is appropriate. We really appreciate it. But it's... Hey, but it's five. (laughs) And leave a review talking about how how great it is. If you're listening to this on YouTube for some reason, I have been uploading to YouTube, so theoretically you could. You can give us a like, 
If you're listening to us somewhere else, I don't know. I'm sure they have a thing. I'm sure yeah. they have a thing there. <laughs> if you're listening to this, on, if you're listening to this on YouTube, leave a comment. Tell us, you know, what what crazy, you know, old animated film you'd want us to check out. Literally, the best part of YouTube is the ability to just have the comments there. Technically, yeah. we also have comments on the website, but come on, <laughs> yeah, come on, come on. If you want a no. comment that only I will ever see, because it will just go directly to my email. Uh, leave it there. <laughs> Next time, we're gonna watch Bartok the Magnificent. A very good movie, probably. It includes three sing-alongs. I am the ghost of John Smith. I am the ghost of Tsar Nicholas. That feels tasteless to me. <laughs>《A brand new timeless classic》，it says. That seems unlikely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh god, is this a prequel? I do believe it is. It has Kelsey Grammer in it. That's even wilder. Oh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good movie. It's gonna be, I think, a good bad movie. Catherine O'Hara. It has Catherine O'Hara in it, and Diedrich Bader. Oh, he's probably just um, a background character. <laughs> Um, yeah, I can't wait to hear somebody in the background just be like, is that a talking bat? And that's it. <laughs> oh, that was him. <laughs> he was on this podcast for two seconds. <laughs>